All right. Uh, good morning, you all our farmers. Welcome to the webinar on the business of brassica production. I'm Rollings, your moderator for today. This webinar is sponsored by the Tobacco Research Board, and we do have Zimbabwe Fertilizer Company, which is ZFC, on board, and we also have Musica Solutions, who are the leading uh, suppliers in Brassica's production. Uh, they do uh, supply seedlings, uh, and uh, when it comes to ZFC, they are into soil health and crop health. And Musica Analytics, they do provide up-to-date market and price trends. Uh, so uh, today we do have three presentations for you, followed by a question and answer session where you, uh, you farmers can ask all our presenters and the experts that are joining us today anything that you want uh, to know about Brassica uh, production. So uh, we do have uh, Zizai Munutu from ZFC. Uh, good morning once again and welcome, uh, Zizai. Good morning, Rollins. Good, 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 uh, good morning to you, all listeners. Uh, thank you. Then we also have uh, Fungai Zinyandu from Kutsaga or Tobacco Research Board. Good morning, Fungai. How are you? Uh, good morning. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining in. And we have uh, a representative from Mutika uh, Solutions in Sydney. Good morning, Sydney. How are you? Good morning, Rollings. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Sure. Thank you. So uh, without further ado, let's go straight into our first presentation from Funga Izinyandu, who is representing the Tobacco Research Board, uh, or Kutsaka. Uh, she will talk about Brassica seedling management, and uh, she'll give us a comprehensive guide uh, in that regard. Uh, Fungai, the stage is yours. A uh, pleasant morning to you once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Fungai Izinyandu from Tobacco Research Board and I'm um, joined by my colleague Aretha Chaco and um, we welcome you to our presentation where we'll be focusing more on seedling production, focusing on brassica, brassica seedlings. So this is the presentation, the outline presentation. We'll talk about the importance of good seedling management, uh, nutrient requirements, uh, factors that affect seedling production and we'll also take this chance to talk about the uh, uh, products and services that we have for our um, uh, horticulture farmers focusing more on the um, uh, brassica seedlings. So uh, seedling production is an essential part of uh, brassica production. Therefore, good quality seedlings is one of the critical steps farmers should uh, pay attention to. Uh, good quality seedlings are important for early crop establishment, uh, improves crops, crop nutrition, reduces um, uh, costs uh, in terms of gap feeding. And when you have good seedlings, you might not need to gap fill because all your crops will have established well. And also um, it results in improved uh, yield and quality. If the crop has established well, uh, it means all, all, all um, practice are held constant, you get an improved yield um, of good quality. Uh, therefore, in order for farmers to produce healthy good seedlings, um, good production methods are supposed to be implemented. And um, uh, this is, uh, these are accompanied by uh, good agronomic practices. So for seedling production methods, we've got various uh, methods that growers can use for seedling production. We've got the conventional um, system where seedlings are um, produced in the soil, uh, our natural media. We've got the rate system, where seedlings are produced in floating trays, but they will be um, suspended uh, on tables or any form of material. And we also have the floating system where the seedlings are constantly floating in water and all the nutrients that they, they require are provided in the water. And um, for particularly maybe the, some of the advantages of the floating system, um, it is more efficient. It has more efficient water and nutrient use uh, usage. It provides a superior, um, uh, seedlings which are uniform and also it eliminates nutrient leaching as all the nutrients are applied uh, in and all, all the nutrients are applied in water. So uh, when when farm when you have when a farmer has chosen the right method of um, uh, producing their seedlings, um, they now have to choose a good site for seedling production. This uh, seedling production can be done in greenhouses. Um, or uh, you, can do, you can do your production on open fields. 
So when you're producing your seedlings uh, on open field, one may require uh, plastic tents um, to protect the seedlings against frost, against um, um, rain, and also against harsh weather conditions is illustrated in the picture uh, below. And also the nurseries should have reliable clean water source for watering and also um, uh, nut nutrition application and pesticide application. Uh, they should have boundaries for protection so that you don't allow people to just come in and out. Um, this may uh, cause uh, contamination and spread diseases. And also it should have good surface drainages to avoid accumulation of um, diseases. And also when, you, when uh, one is using the floating system, um, it should have the site should be well leveled for adequate distribution of um, nutrients and, and water. And um, one of the critical um, cho choices in good seedling production is uh, media choice and preparation. Good quality media should have good pH, which ranges from about 5.5 to 6.5, depending on the media. It should be pests and disease free, uh, it should be nematode free, it should be uh, weed free and uh, any other um, external um, foreigners, they, they should not be found in that media. And um, the common uh, growth media that are normally used in seedling production include uh, Gromix Ultra, we have Coco Pit, we have uh, Pit Moss, and we have uh, our natural uh, media that is um, soil, depending on the type of um, seedling production that you have choice that you have chosen. So in media preparation, especially when you're looking at um, the Gromix Ultra, the cocoa, the cocoa pit, it should be prepared to consistency so that um, you have good tray filling. Um, your trays will, will not have fallout or will not, will not have uh, what we call dry cells with um, um, water will not be able to reach uh, the, 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 the trays the media, sorry. So um, when we have when we have finished our group, our um, media preparation, um, we then move on to sowing. Um, we all always urge our farmers to be well planned and planning ahead for any um, events that they are facing. So an ideal time for sowing should be at least three to between three to five weeks before planting, uh, before the intended planting date so that uh, the seedlings will have time to grow and also the farmer will have time to prepare their land without uh, being rushed. And um, when we are sowing, um, there should be a, a depth of about 1.5 to 2 centimeters, depending on the size of the, of the, of the seed and of the, of the crop as well. So a depth of what can be used to make um, the holes uh, at a des des designated depth, which the seedling will then be sown in. And um, sowing should be done uh, one seed per cell so that the, the seedling can develop and grow uh, in the space which it needs, which, or which it requires. And when sowing or the use of a mechanical seed that can be done, um, this mechanical seed that can be used to sow uh, the brassicas, uh, the cabbages, uh, cauliflowers, the broccoli, because it has, the si it, it, it has a seed uh, which has the same, which is the same as the, um, as the um, tobacco pelleted seed. So it is designed for, for, for that size. And um, after sowing, um, seeds can be covered uh, lightly with media so that they will have, um, they can have good uh, root anchorage and also um, they can uh, germinate well. But except for uh, lettuce, which needs, which requires uh, much light for germination. So it doesn't need to be, to be um, to be covered, and um, after um, one of the good management uh, agronomic practices that farmers should uh, pay attention to is uh, moisture management in seedling production. Uh, moisture is one of the important um, uh, components uh, in seedling germination and growth, so it has to be monitored well. Earlier on, I had talked about clean water sources, uh, which is uh, which is reliable. Clean water should be use in seedling production to avoid uh, contamination of diseases and um, 
and also poor growth. So you, uh, what people, we urge our growers to get their water tested so that they know the type of water that they're using and uh, the, if it is salty, if it, uh, so, uh, if it is saline, so that they, um, you can know which uh, water to use and how to rectify um, or how to correct your, your water, or maybe you might need to look for another water source so that you have good uh, crop production practices. So um, adequate water should be supplied daily, depending on, crops, on, on the crop stage, uh, on early days, uh, mid, uh, later, or during hardening stage. So this differs with the um, amount of, uh, with the size of the, of the nutrients. So uh, water should be monitored well if, if moisture is applied uh, in excess, it may result in um, diseases uh, and also it might result in also accumulation of algae and this will attract uh, some pests like fungus snaps. So we don't want that in our, uh, in our seeds. So we just have to put the adequate water which is required by the plant at a given time. And uh, we move on to nutrition management. Uh, one of the critical uh, roles uh, in required in seedling production. So nutrients are required um, for, for, for growth and development of, of seedlings. And uh, the demand for nutrients, <coughs> excuse me, the demand for nutrients increases according to the growth stages. And the nutrients that we apply um, when the seedling um, has just developed its true leaves and the nutrients that we apply when the seedling is, when the seedling is at three weeks, it, it differs. And also the nutrients differs according to um, the, crop, the, um, the crop type. So application of nutrients should be centered um, on the right source, the right rate, and the right application time and the right place. So nutrients, um, the delay in, in applying uh, nutrients will result in uh, um, poor crop growth. So nutrients should be applied right on time. Um, when you're using the rate system, uh, nutrients are applied um, when the crop has developed uh, some true leaves. Uh, and uh, when uh, you're using the floating system, nutrients can be applied in water just um, when you're floating or at seven days, depending on the, on the type of crop that we are looking at. So for the nutrient sources that, uh, that uh, our growers can use, we've got, um, uh, for the floating system, you can use the Kutsaga float fat. It, uh, it is applied, uh, or ZFC hydro fat, which is applied at uh, 7, 14, and 21 days after sowing at uh, different rates. You can also use um, quick start, quick grow, um, some foliar or organic fertilizers, which are very useful to, to, to crop growth. I'm sure um, Mr. Zizai will unpack fully on this side. Uh, um, nutrient management. And uh, for pest and disease management, um, one of the, this is one of the uh, critical uh, management practices that farmers should also pay attention to uh, because you might uh, uh, do all your practices well, providing nutrients, uh, providing enough moisture, good, uh, um, good sanitation, uh, good sanitation, but you will fail on, on uh, pest management. So one of the, uh, some of the common pests, which um, are common in brassica seedling production include aphids, um, diamond back moth, we've got locusts, we've got uh, cutworms, we have uh, white fly, we also have fungus nut for, especially in the floating system. So the best way to control or manage our pests is to conduct, uh, to do scouting regularly. Scouting will help you to identify um, the pest while this, um, the infestation has not uh, increased and you will be able to control uh, the, um, the pest on time. Also, you can do a routine uh, chemical control sprays um, according to the, um, to the, to the type of, um, of the pest that has infested your, your, your crop. Uh, we've got uh, for the diamond bed bond, you can use belt um, and uh, you can also use uh, uh, traps. These traps can um, assist in one, identifying the type of pest which is in your, in your, in your nursery because once the pest has, um, has been trapped on the, on, the, on the 
uh, on the trip, uh, it won't escape. So it, you also look at that, and then you know um, the pests that are in your that the pests that are in your in your nursery, and you will, and then you will control them accordingly. Uh, there is also good sanitation. Um, we urge our farmers to be hygienic at all times so that um, you will not have any infestation. Our nurseries or any things, uh, any surroundings should be cleared weed free because our some of the weeds can have this pests and uh, then they will move on to the nursery. So once we control our seedlings in the nursery and uh, have um, failed to control this our uh, surroundings, it will have an impact because these will just migrate from the nursery outwards and from the outside, outside outside surroundings back into the nursery. So we need to manage this uh, well and um, practicing good sanitization. And uh, for disease management, one of the most common uh, diseases in silly management is a uh, damping off. Um, this is when um, uh, the stem, where the, where the stem and the media join uh, collapses. The stem will be, will be thin and then it, it collapses at the, end of the, at the end of the day. So there is a um, cutoff of nutrient supply from the roots up to the, the, to the shoots. So this um, is mainly um, common in first three weeks of, uh, of, transfer, of, of sowing, depending on the system that you're using. And one of the um, uh, challenges is once the crop has been affected, you cannot recover it because the connection between the roots and the shoot will have collapsed. So there will not be any um, channeling of nutrients between um, the, the roots and the shoot. So they, the crop will, will die. So um, uh, your nursery can be wiped out with with this to do with this disease, so we just urge our farmers to be cautious when when they are um, conducting their necessary programs and do routine sprays, uh, biological uh, and chemical, so that they will try and er eradicate this problem while it hasn't uh, spread. So you can use uh, the uh, different fungicides which you can use which um, you can apply as a curative or as a preventative. So that uh, uh, in case that you haven't, um, you haven't been affected, you are protecting your seedling from being damaged. And in case that you have been affected, um, you can control, you can control and try to salvage, salvage the, the seedlings that you have been left with. So for the biological, we've got um, uh, one of our products called Trichoderma. It is a biological product which con controls um, on, which control uh, on dumping off and also um, rhizoctonia and also it um, uh, boosts the plant immune system so that uh, the plant will, will grow properly. And also um, cleaning trays properly will help in managing diseases because some of the spores uh, who have been left in the in the cells. So once you, you don't clean up your trays and come up with the next crop, you will be um, spreading the disease and you won't be controlling it. So um, good um, sanitization is required. And also greenhouse fumigation or the necessary fumigation, it is very important because um, it will kill uh, some of the disease and destroy some of the disease cycles. Then, uh, and, and it will then, the farmer will then have time, uh, a dead period where the, the pests and diseases will, cycles will be broken. And in the next time now they come with their, with their seedling for, for production, the greenhouse will be clean and ready to, to produce another cycle. And um, one of the critical uh, seedling processes which farmers should uh, pay attention to is hardening. This process is done uh, before uh, we go to the field, when, when we see that our seedlings are almost ready for, 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 for transplanting, it is done uh, between seven to 10 days before transplanting. And um, 
uh, we will be subjecting our seedlings to harsh environmental condition in preparation for transplanting. Because once we subject, uh, once we put this, the unhardened seedlings in the field, uh, they'll suffer stress and uh, they'll die. So this will increase um, um, our gap filling rates and also it is labor laborious. So we just have to make sure that seedlings are well hardened be, uh, when, when we go to the field. So um, hardening also um, improves um, uh, carbon hydrate, carbohydrate co uh, concentration in the seedling, which is essential for, for early, root, um, early root development at early stages. And um, hardening can be done through uh, water stress where uh, the seedling is deprived from, from water um, at a certain, for a certain period. And when the seedling has, uh, when the seedling starts to wilt um, before 10, that's when you start watering. Um, that's when you start watering your seedling. So this process should, uh, should be uh, well done and uh, to, in, in detail so that you won't uh, lose your seedlings at this stage because you will have came along a long way and then at three, four weeks, that's when you start. And if not done properly, you may lose uh, some of your, uh, you, you may lose the seedlings. So we just age um, growers to um, pay attention to this uh, process. And some of the common mistakes that uh, we, 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 we see in nurseries is uh, neglecting, um, uh, scouting the scouting process, which is very important because it helps you to identify the the problems in your in your in your nursery. We don't want uh, farmers to just uh, assume that everything is fine, and at the end of the day, you will get a uh, few seedlings from the base that you have established. So uh, this is one of the critical um, processes that should should be done, and also uh, we have. Uh, uh, missing the dates of uh, remove uh, to remove tray in the germination compartments. Uh, um, after sowing, uh, we we see that some farmers take their seedlings, take their trays in order to increase uh, the germination days. But then, uh, if you miss that, if you miss the day uh, with, uh, if you miss the the um, floating day or, or the uh, or putting your seedlings in the um, growth compartment by a day or two, you affect the growth of the ceiling because it will now have a spiral stem because it will be looking for um, uh, sunlight. So we just, uh, seedlings should be stick at least between three and uh, five days, uh, depending on the crop type, so that you won't have all those un un unnecessary losses. And also poor um, moisture management is one of the mistakes that, <coughs> excuse me, it's one of the mistakes that um, uh, farmers uh, tend to, 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 to do. And um, brassicas are normally planted uh, at a certain time, except for cabbage, which we just see that they, they are they're sown all year round. For cauliflower and broccoli, uh, we see that they are normally uh, sowed between the winter period from February up to August. So we, we tend to see that some of, um, of the growers then want to produce uh, after that season. Uh, we can see that uh, there are some varieties which, are, which can be uh, done off season, but you need to know the variety that you're dealing with so that you won't have losses after purchasing the seed, the, 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 the crop and failing to produce it. And also poor planning. We see that um, most growers um, uh, do not plan well and this will affect um, the seedling production. It will also uh, affect uh, crop production in the field. So we just add our farmers to uh, diarize all their work and plan properly. And um, for our products and services uh, section, I'll leave this time for Arita uh, Chaco to give you um, some of the, the products that you can use in in seedling production. Mm, hello. 
Oh, Hello? can you hear me? Yes, Hello? yes, sure. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Oh, welcome you all to the product and services section. My name is Areta Chapo, as Fungayas alluded to. Uh, at Kutsaga, we have various products which you can use in brassica production in seedling. So we have uh, the Kutsaga Grow Mix, which is a 100% organic soilless media, which is locally produced. A, we manufacture it here at Kutsaga Research Station. It's pest and disease free. It's well mixed and composted and it's suitable for all vegetable seedlings production. It has good water holding capacity and an optimum pH, which is between 5.5 and 6.5, and it has high cash and exchange capacity as well. We have Kutsaga float trays. This we use for seedling production. They ensure uniform seedlings, a robust root system, as well as healthy seedlings. We also have the Kutsaga float fat, which is a liquid fertilizer a balanced basal liquid fertilizer, which is used in the float seed bed. We have a Kutsaga mechanical seed. This we use for a nursery for sowing. It is labor saving, it's precise, it helps us in precision. It's time saving as well, because for with using a human labor, a one person will do 10 trays in a day, a, but when you are using a, the seed, if one person can do 720 trays. So it is time, time serving. We also have trichoderma, which is a T77. This one is a broad spectrum fungicide in the biostimulant, which in, induces resilience of the plant. Those that have used it do not want to stop using it. It's, um, it's, it's allergic because of the good results. We also have the Kutsaga nut buster. These are fly traps, they help uh, in identifying insects and pests, uh, which infect our crops, they trap insects and pests as well. And then we also have the Dibu board. This board will help us in making holes in the flood trays when we are doing our nursery for ease of seeding and sowing. They manage the space as well so that they, our, seed, our seedlings will be spaced and we will not have problems. We move on to Kutsaga services. One of the most services which maybe you do not know will be necessary facilities. We have necessary facilities here at Kutsaga where we can propagate your seedlings for you and um, at a fee, of course, but it's very friendly. We also have certain services from our divisions. We have a soil and water testing. We test water for suitability in irrigation, and then we have soil so testing, this is a, mainly we will be looking at the soil DNA so that you know which fertilizers to apply to your seedlings. And uh, sometimes we have problems where we get a loss not uh, because we have uh, not followed the good agronomic practices, but because we do not know what we should put in our soil. Sometimes we end up using too much fertilizer or too little fertilizer. So soil analysis will help us know which fertilizers we should put exactly. We also have seed pelleting services. This is just a increasing the size of the seed for easy handling. Let's say we are using trays to sow or maybe a, a direct onto the land. So they're just increasing the size of the seed. We also have pesticide residue analysis. Yeah, I'm sure you agree with me that uh, most uh, some of the brassicas, we consume them raw and it is very, necessary to be cautious so that we know the pesticide residue in our uh, final product. We also have laboratory services uh, for tissue culture. We have plant tissue culture. Plant tissue culture, this is simply maybe multiplication of your varieties or preserving a variety. Say you have your variety, which we have, and maybe a few seed and you want to multiply, we can do that. We can screen and then preserve the variety for you. This will ensure that you have a first generation disease free seed. Then also a viral indexing. This is detecting diseases at a molecular level. At Kutsaga, you may want to know that we also have a plant clinic. At the plant clinic, we uh, is a hospital for plants so that you can treat your plants uh, it's uh, the right time and to know which chemicals you are going to use. 
at the plant clinic, uh, I have to say this, you have to bring a, a crop which is at the beginning of infection and that which is infected and the crop which has not yet been infected so that the, the, the specialists will be able to ascertain which of the diseases or pests are affecting you in your field. We also have advisory services for pesticide and chemicals to use in our fields here at Kutsaga. Um, we have training and technical backup for free here at Kutsaga Research Station. You just come in and we can assist you free of charge. Maybe the charge will be that maybe you ensure us you use our products in the future. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of our presentation and our contacts are shared on your screens. Feel free to come in anytime. Our hotline is WhatsApp only and our email address is shared. Thank you. Thank you. We are open for mm -hmm. questions. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Fungai and Aretha, for that informative presentation. And I'm sure our farmers have learned a lot about uh, uh, how they can go about, including the good agronomic practices in horticulture. And just a heads up to our farmers, uh, there are some unscrupulous nurseries out there that are mixing varieties, and you only get to know or to find out at a later stage. So it is important that you source your seedlings from reputable suppliers such as the Tobacco Research Board. And this is why we have them on board. So if you need any seedlings, Kutsaga is your plug. And if you do have any questions or comments for them, please type in the chat box here on Zoom, or you can comment if you are watching us live on the Agribusiness Media Facebook page. And as we said earlier on, we are going to have presentations, then the question and answer after all the presentations. So our next presenter, Zidzai from ZFC Limited, who will cover soil health and crop protection. Zidzai, please take it away. Thank you, Liz. Mm. Morning to you again, uh, once again, listeners. Um, I'll be focusing on crop protection as well as soil health management uh, to deal with uh, the practices. So to start off, um, I'm just looking at the general requirements of your practices. I'm sure that uh, we all understand that our practices entails a, 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 a wide range of uh, vegetables, that is your cabbages, your kale, cauliflower, uh, broccoli, etc. So um, in the interest of time, I'll just go through these ones, um, where your brassicas basically require daytime temperatures of 16 to 24 degrees Celsius, but of course in Zimbabwe we do have temperatures that exceed 24 degrees Celsius and we still, you still have the brassicas thriving well. Then um, one of the major reasons why brassicas are grown uh, or why most farmers prefer growing them in winter is because they are frost tolerant. Uh, in cases where you have uh, temperature drops of negative uh, three degrees Celsius, uh, they will be able to withstand dozens of which um, in most parts of the country, we barely have zero degrees Celsius ground uh, temperatures uh, as it is the ground temperature. So you, they can thrive very well uh, during winter and you can still have good heads uh, that are disease free. But one of, one, of, one of the requirements as well is basically you need well-drained soils. For most crops, you need well-drained soil uh, to allow soil activities um, to, 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 to take place, be it the biota, uh, air circulation, movement of your water, ETC. It then helps in, um, in, in the root penetration and supply of nutrients. Uh, basically, the, the environment would be conducive for growth of your crop. Uh, and then for the pH, basically, you for most of these uh, brassicas, you want a pH range of 5.5 to 6.5 um, with um, uh, good water holding capacity because they take in a bit of water, uh, especially during the head filling stage, uh, you need that. So for you to be able to, to get to know your pH range, uh, ZFC does offer services to do with soil analysis, and we are here to offer you that to get uh, brassica. But now going on to the disease management, uh, you need to employ different uh, practices. Uh, in this case, I've highlighted uh, uh, cultural and chemical means. 
I'm sure Fungai has highlighted uh, issues, has he highlighted issues to do with uh, the cultural uh, control methods that you need to use your certified seed. You need to have repeatable nurseries if you can't grow your own. And uh, you also have to practice to practice good hygiene. Uh, that is control of movement, uh, seed material, the equipment that you use, it is to be septic so that you don't need to bring in uh, fungal pathogens uh, into your into your crop, be it in the nursery or in the field as the crop grows. But let me also ask to say, uh, for the chemical control method, we have uh, a product called Bion, which is not a fungicide or insecticide or any other category. It is a plant activator, we, which... Um, stimulates the plant's natural defense mechanism so that it, it, is, it is able to fight off diseases. Once it fights off diseases, uh, especially during the uh, early vegetative stages, you then have good control of your, um, it then helps your crop to withstand diseases. Uh, but as an additional precautionary measure, you can also come in with your uh, preventive fungicides, uh, such as your copoxychloride and your mancozeb, this control uh, a, a, a enough of uh, fungal pathogens and your crop should be able to go through. But in the event that there are some diseases that might have uh, come in, which I will elaborate, you can also come in with um, yeah, your control measures, such as your metal men or your rhythm, your gold, uh, to control those diseases. But uh, of such importance in disease management, you need to be wary of uh, your retonia and pythium root rot is Basically, these affect your, 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 your brassicas in the nursery stage or as soon as you have transplanted them. Within the first week or two, you generally have challenges to do with the resotonia or pythium root rot. But you can use your apron star to control um, these uh, three diseases. Apron star is made up of three active ingredients and it is a wonderful product, which is RFC cells and has in stock and um, you can make use of it uh, as you saw your seedlings during the, um, during the nursery stage. You also need to take note of your black rot and your downy mildew, uh, for which you can uh, use your metal men to control these diseases. Uh, you, the other important thing to take note, especially when you want, once your food has been uh, hit by your black rot or your downy mildew, you may want to consider doing crop, serious crop rotations as well as some fumigation if need be. Uh, depending on the intensity of uh, of your of your of the infestation, but uh, sure seed houses they do tell you that this this variety has got uh, black rot resistance, etc. Like uh, the one we talk at ZFC, your Fabio and your Intello, uh, they are they are they are quite resistant uh, to black rot. They've been doing one for most farmers. So as as we always recommend, it is important to carry. Uh, fungicides with the different modes of action uh, so that you, you get to control um, different diseases because you don't want to, to take chances with your crop. It's an investment in this best to be proactive before the onset of any disease. But since um, the, the, most of these brassicas, they have got uh, waxy, waxy leaves, you want to improve the penetration of your chemical, be it on the insect or on the leaf of your of your brassica by applying or mixing your chemical with the water. At ZFC, we stock what we call sunawet, uh, as well as uh, a which you can mix with your with your products, uh, with either your insecticide or your fungicide, so that you get the best use or the best efficacy of your product once you have applied it. For your insect management, what we encourage farmers as always is to do regular scouting so that you get to observe whatever is happening within uh, your field. As you do the observations, you want to have positive identification of any kind of pest that would have uh, come to your field. That's when you then come in with your appropriate chemical measure, control measure, because we have realized or observed that most farmers, they apply any insecticide for the sake of it or any uh, pesticide for the sake of it that they wish uh, or guess that it might be able to control. But uh, it's important that I highlight to you farmers that pesticides are specific. They, can, they work specifically for, uh, for, for, for certain pests, be it 
uh, your aphids, your lepidopteran pests, your coleopters. It, is, it, it really depends on the insect which you want to control. So since they are specific, we need to have a different range for each pest that you don't, you, you, you then minimize the chances of uh, resistance. But uh, basically, for your, for your most common crops, you have your cutworms, the soil, the, the, the soil dwelling pests, for which you can control with your lambda sahalotrin, your fenvarelet, or even your chlorophyllus. Then for the aphids, you can drench your actara uh, during the seedling stage as they are young, as well as uh, you, your thunder and diamethate. For the cabbage webworm, the diamond bag, the lava, the leaf miners, we recommend that you use your belt, your indoxa cap, spike extra, or even your ampligo. Then for the cabbage moth uh, and the crickets, as well as the, the locusts, you can use carbon 85 wettable powder. Then for the trips, you use your ampligo, thunder, and malatine 25 wettable powder. Um, but there are key factors that the farmer must appreciate and understand is they use their insecticides. Probably the first one is to say you need to understand, read and understand uh, the instructions on the label. Then the second one, you need to minimize reliance on one product. Like I said, you need to broaden or have different options for a particular pest so that you don't have build up of resistance over time in that particular field. Then uh, do not over apply a product and you need to use well calibrated equipment. You need to use the correct nozzles, the correct pressure, uh, the correct uh, mixing uh, rates. But of course, as you do that, you need to make sure that you yourself as the farmer, you are well protected uh, since the requirement to put in your, to put on your, your PPE, um, to minimize contact with your, with your pesticides because they are dangerous and they're poisonous. But moving on to your, our crop nutrition uh, for brassicas of different products, it's ZF, it's ZFC, uh, which you can use uh, in your crops, uh, in your brassicas, uh, using different being guided by the soil analysis. So a vegetable blend has got uh, those nutrients, uh, tobacco blend, tobacco fat, the seed bed fat, as well as uh, your gypsum, which you can incorporate uh, during planting. All these basal fertilizers have got to be incorporated uh, during planting. But like I said, the choice is determined by the soil analysis results that then helps us to, that then helps us and guides us in coming up with the right food product. Uh, for most farmers with the same soils, we recommend that you use your, 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 your vegetable blend, which is what's your thing. Uh, and you can see that for most of these FC products, contain your boron and your sulfur, is these are also key in supporting the plant growth and development. Then for addressing as are using your uh, potato super top, your potassium nitrate, your also key, calcium ammonium nitrate, calcium nitrate, as well as your ammonium nitrate. But of course, uh, whether or not to use your SOP, uh, which supplies most of your potash, is dependent on the fact that your soil could have uh, less of your of your force of, of your of your potash, or if you have got potash fixing soils, you then have certain remedies like your MKP, the mono potassium phosphate, which you can use uh, in your crop to apply the the, the mixing element, or even your MAP. So these are the soluble forms of your products which you can then use as your as your fertilizer. Now for the special fertilizer, which you can then spray change, or apply through fertigation, you can use your quick start, which is basically applied from week one to week number four, and your quick grow from uh, week five going onwards. But I, so it's important that I highlight to you from us that you see that uh, your phosphor, your quick start has got 6% of your phosphorus, which then supports uh, the root development. And as you switch on to your grow, you want to support uh, um, the expansion of your the expansion of your leaves as well as head filling, you require a bit more nitrogen on that, which is why we have designed to grow to have your 20% uh, nitrogen as well as 20% uh, of water. But it's also important that you know that these um, have got additional trace elements, your, 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 your boron, sulfur, zinc, uh, magnesium, molybdenum, and your copper. In With farmers that have got uh, challenges to do with your potash, uh, you can apply best bloom. Despite that, most farmers understand that uh, it works well for flowering plants. Brassicas may not be uh, flowering, but you then need to 
uh, to, to, to use it, uh, uh, you can then apply it in program. This is just, just a big a range of the special fertilizers that you can apply in your, in your, in your, in your, in your crop. But now, uh, moving to the last part of the presentation to do with weed management, you can use your you can use your glyphosate. It is a pre-planned cleanup, in the sense that you would want to control any weeds that are existing on the crop. Glyphosate is non-selective uh, and it is systemic. So once you've cleared your field, you can then come in and transplant your 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 brassica, say a week a week later or so, uh, depending on how well uh, the, depending on the size or age of the weeds. But as fungi has highlighted earlier, it's important to have um, um, a, 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 a well to to allow root penetration, water movement. As I highlighted earlier, is during the part of the presentation. That's what you need. So glyphosate works well for your pre-emergence. You can use your dual magnum and metal or metallaclo, uh, which must be applied within five days of transplanting to control uh, both your broad leaf weeds and your grasses before they emerge. You then apply this product afterwards, you may have challenges with your crop establishment. Uh, some, of the, some of them may be squashed out. But to do with your control of your broad leaf weeds, we recommend that you use your fluoroxifop. Um, the application rate really depends on the age of the annual and perennial weeds that you might have uh, in your crop. So farmers, it's important that you get to understand uh, um the the stage of your crop if you get if you if you're not sure of it you need to engage your zfc agronomist uh so that you get the the the, 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 the appropriate recommendation in terms of uh chemical application for your for your product uh ladies and gentlemen thank you so much um for listening to me those are my contact details and in a nutshell uh the services that are offered by the thank you all right uh thank you zizai uh, for that enlightening presentation and i'm sure farmers you have gained a lot of insights on how to keep your soil health and also to protect your crops from uh, pests and diseases uh, when it comes to brassica uh, production our third and last presenter is sydney from musica solutions and he will talk about uh, cabbage uh, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, rep, and mustard greens market and price trends. So his, present uh, his presentation is on the price uh, trends as well as uh, the market. Uh, Sydney, it's your turn. Uh, thank you, Rollins. Um, good morning once again to all the listeners. I hope um, we are all doing well in our agri businesses, wherever we are. So today, um, I'm going to touch on the uh, price trends for most brassicas and um, the leafy vegetables that we, we do um, as farmers. It is important to note that um, every cropping decision is a, is a business decision. So farmers need to really give it a, a real thought before they actually uh, get into production. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear me, Rolf, before I uh, proceed. Sure, sure, please do go ahead. Would you want us to share your screen from the side? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so I was saying every cropping decision should be should be a business decision, so which, which means that you just don't get into production with, without giving it a good thought because yeah, there's money involved, there's time involved. So the million dollar question is, what informs your production decision when it comes to, to, to production and cropping? What is it that you consider before you get into production? Is it because that you hear that cabbages are paying uh, high in the market or is it because uh, your friend is doing cabbages or what is it that you really, you really consider? So I think as I always emphasize, farmers should um, do their market research first before they get into production. You should never produce a crop without establishing without establishing a market. And uh, this is very important for crops like um, cauliflower, broccoli, and other uh, other high value crops because 
what then it means is if you produce your cauliflower before establishing a market or your broccoli, when you get to the market and the market rejects your product or you don't have a range market, it's the kind of product that you can't easily um, dispose of on the market. It's different from cabbage because cabbage has a, a very big market compared to, to your broccoli and your cauliflower. So we really urge farmers to, to establish a market first before they venture into the production of, um, of such crops. Um, then um, today we also want to talk about the, the market prices that you are likely to get on, on the market when you, when you take your produce to the market. So here we have um, cauliflower, broccoli and leafy vegetables. We have the normal prices, the average prices. This chart will help you to come up with um, a cash flow projection because like I said, every cropping decision is a business decision. So you need to know whether your, 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 your venture that you want to, uh, to embark on will give you a return or not. So it's important to have this chart with you every time you want to do production. It helps you to understand what exactly you're likely to get from, from, from the market. So for cabbages, um, it's not very normal to get um, a price that's above hundred uh, above dollar twenty but it's possible you can sometimes get that price usually uh, during the um, February, March, January period, it's very possible to get that, um, that price. But the usual average price for cabbage for planning purposes should be worth at 50 cents. That's the average price that um, you, you can get if we add all, um, average all the prices from January to December. Um, then it's also not, it's very rare to find cabbages selling below 20 cents on the market. It's, it's very possible. So it's important for farmers to then have their cash flows, uh, highlighting the minimum and the maximum prices that they're likely to get and the average price so that they can at least know if it's telling and it's making any business, it's making any business sense. Um, then for broccoli and cauliflower, these usually have a, a stable price uh, throughout the year. Um, with the highest price usually around um, around summer because it, they are very difficult to manage during hot uh, period. So it, you can get an above normal high of two dollars fifty per kg for cauliflower and broccoli, depending on your market. But for open market, uh, it's usually a normal high of dollar fifty per kg, then a below normal low of fifty cents. The kg, but the, up, the average is usually between 75 cents to a dollar per kg. Then for leaf vegetables, um, you can get a bundle of cove or your grape or your tsunga at five dollars, usually around um, January, February, and March. It's also possible to get those prices, um, but the usual normal high is three dollars fifty. This is what we usually encourage farmers to work with $3.50 and an average price of $2 per, per large bundle, the seven kg bundle. Uh, for those who usually take their produce to Mbari, you know the size of the bundle that I'm talking about. So it's usually to have this chat with you um, every time you want to do um, your, your cropping so that you can inform your, your business decisions using this, this data. Um, I also want to encourage farmers to have leafy vegetables um, at, their, at their farms because these can provide a valuable um, working capital or operational capital because um, they're easy to manage usually and they can give you a steady flow of income uh, while you're wait, waiting for your, for your major crop uh, to ripen and to, to be taken to the market. So um, this cabbage chart, statistical chart, will give us a rough um, a rough trend on, on the prices of most of these brassicas because they usually follow the same trend and chart. Why is that so? Because uh, you'd find that the prices are usually low in winter because uh, um, a lot of farmers will be doing these um, leafy vegetables, your cabbages, your bro broccoli and cauliflower, they, are easily, they can easily be managed during winter more than they can be managed during summer. So you definitely find a high price during high, uh, during January to March period, like I highlighted earlier, um, because they are very difficult to manage during rain season and during um, 
the warm part of the, the warm season. So if you want to do them for, for the high prices, you can consider this period, which is between uh, November and March. If you just want to do the average, you can then consider the, the winter period. So that's basically the statistical chart for almost all vegetables and uh, brassicas. So many farmers then ask me, how then do we, how then do we access this information? How then do we inform our production decisions, baking them with data? So as Musika, we are introducing Musika chatbot. Um, those who have been working with us, they know that they can access these charts on our, on, our, on our website. But we are now introducing a more convenient way for farmers to be able to access this information free of charge. So we are introducing a Musika chatbot that should be launched today at exactly one o'clock. The chatbot will be live and farmers will be able to access it conveniently. The chatbot will be able to provide farmers with daily price updates uh, that we, we were doing before, then they can also do this analysis using the chatbot um, for free. They can also get access to markets. Um, the most important thing, which I think uh, every farmer needs, is an access to, to is access to the markets. After you produce your crops, you definitely have to sell so that you can realize a profit. So the chatbot is also coming in with with the market access uh, option, where farmers can actually list their products, and also buyers can then be able to access their their products uh, on the chatbot. It's convenient because it's just your WhatsApp. You use your WhatsApp. Um, then you be good to go. Farmers can also be able to buy inputs through the chatbot. So you'll be having your Kutaga projects, your ZFC projects, and many other input suppliers uh, will also be having their products listed on the chatbot. So you can simply search for any input that you want, then you'll be able to buy the input using that, that chatbot. Then also be able to access weather, news, and tips, then you'll be able to chat with experts. This is a very important uh, feature that uh, I'm liking about this chatbot because um, there are a lot of people out there giving out information, but this information, is it true? Is, is, is it authentic? Is it, is it uh, really correct to the farmer? So we'll be having experts that you can then chat with uh, on the chatbot free of charge. So I think farmers should then um, be able to take uh, advantage of this platform, which is free of charge, and be able to make the agribusiness ventures profitable and viable. For you to be able to access this new WhatsApp channel, is simply WhatsApp the went high to the number uh, plus 263-777-886297 is um, as shown on the, on the screen. These are our channels that you can access for you to be able to, to get this all, all this information for free. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you're free to hit us on our WhatsApp numbers, and we'll be able to assist you get to make to, for you, to assist you to make data-driven production decisions. Um, back to you, Rollings. Thank you. Uh, that was all I had from my end. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Sydney, for that engaging presentation. I'm sure our farmers appreciated the the useful uh, information on the market price trends. Uh, and um, uh, that is for the brassica uh, crops. And uh, congratulations, Sydney, for uh, on your new product, uh, the chat. So we have now reached the end of the presentations, and we'll now proceed the question and answer uh, session of our webinar. And it is an opportunity for you farmers to engage with our experts uh, joining us today. That is from uh, Kutsaga, which is the Tobacco Research Board, and from uh, ZFC. Uh, and uh, music solutions. So uh, we'll take all the questions that we have uh, sent through in the uh, time that we have uh, left. So the first question is, how can we get in touch with the Tobacco Research Board? How much fertilizer do I need for a hectare of a rep? Okay, um, the guide is always through the your soil analysis results, but uh, maybe as a, as a general knowledge, you need from 400 to 600 kgs, uh, depending on the product uh, in soil analysis, uh, soil analysis result. Okay, the question is when can you apply trichoderma? Okay, uh, trichoderma can be applied 
night at um at the time that you float uh, your seedlings or the time that you you start raising your seedlings um or you can apply the or you can apply it at 14 days after sowing or at 21 days after sowing but um one challenge is um you have to apply it after you have applied uh, your fungicides maybe you're using azoxystrobin so uh, the fungicide will then kill the trichoderma. So you don't want that. So you just have to make sure that your applications are spaced maybe by a week or so, so that you will not destroy the, the trichoderma. Thanks, uh, those are your contact uh, details. So if you want to contact them, you can use the contacts that they've shared on the, on the screen. Uh, thanks so much for sharing your contacts. And the next question is, uh, thanks, Sydney. How can we get? Uh, how can we access market data and price trends for other crops? Okay, um, so farmers can access this information on our chatbot. Um, the number is zero triple seven double eight six two nine seven. They can alternatively um, visit. Uh, um, our analytics website, which is www.musicanalytics.co.zw. Um, those two platforms should be able to, to help them get the information that they want. All right, thanks for taking that one. Then the next question is with reference to the Kusaga crew, do you have any prospects of delving into vegetable seedling production? considering that you are such a reputable tobacco seedling producer and if yes which vegetables in particular will you be interested in and why um okay thank you for that question um yes we uh, produce vegetable seedlings um we are not only um uh venturing into tobacco production but we've got uh, our mandate was widened. So we are focusing into a lot of things, uh, including the horticulture. So we provide all horticulture seedlings uh, from the brassicas, the salinaceas, the cucurbits. And um, we have been, our nursery was um, accredited and uh, we have been in production since 2018. So feel free to come at any time. Um, you can, if you find that Kutsaka is free, we've got um, our sales reps in town, farm this fourth shop. You can go there, contact them, and you tell them what they what you want, and we'll deliver it for you. Can you explain the difference between a waiter and a sticker for the benefit of other farmers? Well, um, there isn't a difference, uh, particularly because they both serve the same purpose. Um, they are there just to enhance or to enhance the efficacy of your product, of your pesticide as you apply it. Uh, the difference could could be uh, the basis for the product, whether it's an alcohol based or it's organosilicon based. Otherwise, they all serve the same purpose to 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 help to improve the efficacy of the product you apply. Thank you. Oh, all right. Thanks, uh, Didai. Then the next question is for Ziza. It says, my field is full of black jack, is a tsine in Shona. As I prepare for planting, how do I clear uh, tsine effectively? And how long before applying basal fertilizers and cutworm, cutworm chemicals? All right. Uh, number one, as you, as you do your weed control, it's important not to let your weeds uh, get to the flowering and reproduction point. It's important to control your weeds during the first day. Um, they have three to five leaf stages. Uh, so number one, you can control it using your, your glyphosate before you transplant. And as you do your land preparation, they are also destroyed. Unfortunately, there isn't any product so far. I know there is a stage effort to find a product that can control uh, broad leaf weeds, uh, such as uh, your black jack, uh, as a post emergence, but currently there isn't. So you need to control it before it um uh before transplanting or when it is emerged as the crop grows, you then need to come in manually during the three to five leaf stage so that it's easier to control and you minimize the weed seed population of your tino or blackjack uh, in your field. 
and then for for your for your for your bus of failures, as I said, you need to plant to to apply these ones before or during transplanting because they have got to be taken up by the roots. So they need to be in the root zone. And for the cutworm control, uh, you can use your fen fenvirilate, uh, chlorpyrifos, um, and your lambda cyanotrin. Those three products should be able to you simply pick one. So you can apply them a day after transplanting. You transplant today, you irrigate, and then the following morning you can put in your, your cutworm control. Uh, yeah, I think that that's about it. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Tizai. Then uh, this one is a comment. It says, thanks, Sydney, for the market and price trends. Quite informative. The next uh, question, we are kindly requesting for Tizai's contacts once more. Tizai, please, if you can shout out your contacts. Okay, it's uh, 074 001 um, and my email address monotu d zfc co w. With reference to Zizai, do you have a custom based soil fertilization programs? And if yes, what is the the minimum possible heritage acceptable to you, particularly in brassica production? You. Yeah, we do customized products uh, for um, for our customers. Uh, we do soil analysis at the FC, like I highlighted uh, earlier. We trust our resources to conduct the analysis and then come up with a <laughs> with a customized product. So it's not necessarily the minimum acreage, but for us to be cost effective, we can run a minimum of a ton, a ton of a higher analysis product uh, through our, our blender at uh, our aspen factory. So a one ton order is 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 just um, suitable for us to be able to my the product for you and then uh, we, we 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 discuss the pricing it's kusaga i did not know you supply uh, seedlings do you have a branch in blawayo okay um we for um seedlings we don't have uh we deliver we don't have a branch in in blawayo but um <clears throat> we deliver we once uh, had uh, clients who were in Blawai and we would deliver seedlings for them. The, so if you have any um, any orders that you want, we can deliver them for you. The other question is, how long does it take to collect seedlings after payment? Um, we need about four weeks uh, between from sowing up until transplanting stage. This one is a comment. It says, thanks for bringing Kutsaga on board. Last year, I bought mixed varieties that costed me big time. Okay, thanks for that comment. Then uh, the next question is, does Mosika do pay on delivery services? I came across an advert uh, on social media. How can we connect with you, Mosika Solutions? Um, yes, we do pay on delivery services for our Blawai, Harare Blawai route. So if you order your product today, uh, you receive it the next day, uh, then you pay on delivery. For you to be able to order through our um, platform, you can simply WhatsApp, WhatsApp us on 0719-454-686 or 0719-454-687. You can simply place an order, then we deliver the product the next day. Uh, we usually do that nationwide, uh, but we are effectively doing same day deliveries on, on the Harare Blawayo route, then 24 hour, within 24 hours on other routes. What's the recommended seedling size for transplanting? Um, the recommended um, transplanting size, it differs with, uh, with the crop, but normally for brassicas, we want the crop to at least a have about four or five uh, true leaves and the centimeters of about uh, five, five, six to seven centimeters. So the seedling should be well hardened and uh, should have true leaves, which will suffice it to the field. All right, uh, thank you. Then uh, another question for you was to ask you the, it says, my question is directed to Kutsaga team. Uh, does uh, trichoderma protect seedlings from downy mildew and wire stem as well, or it is only for uh, dumping off? Then besides seedlings, where else can trichoderma be used? Um, 
thank you for the question. Uh, trichodema uh, can be used for um, damping off mainly. Uh, downy mildew, not, no, 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 it cannot. And um, this product can also be used in the field. Um, uh, so when you're transplanting, uh, before you, you, you put it in the planting hole, um, it, uh, it, it, there are different rates for, for, for each crop. And then, um, so it works best in the soil. So you just have to inoculate it in the planting or you can apply it using a fertilizer cup or a spoon because it's in powder form. So it, 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 it has been tested to work best also in seedling and in the field crops. All right, uh, thanks for uh, taking uh, the point. And our next uh, question is, does Kusaga sell hardened seedlings? Where are you located in Harare? Uh, we are located at, um, after airport, uh, close before Miami. Uh, that's where we are located, that's where our nurseries are. And uh, we also do deliveries in town at Farm this Falls. We've got uh, our sales rep who's always stationed there, uh, even during the weekends. Uh, you just have to communicate with us and then we, we deliver the seedlings for you. So um, for the town deliveries, you just have to communicate earlier, um, get our contact details, tell us the seedlings that you want and uh, we'll deliver them for you. You just have to pick them at um, Farm this Falls. Or you can come here at Tropical Research Port just after airport, about uh, 300 meters after airport. All right, uh, thanks. And uh, what crops can we rotate brassicas with? I don't know, Zai, if you can that, we'll pick that one. All right, you can, you can consider your beets, that's your... Um, your watermelons, English cucumbers, and uh, your solanaceous crops, uh, tomatoes, potatoes, or even your tobacco. Um, then uh, you can also put in your alliums, whether it's your garlic, your onion, etc. Yeah, those are the, the, the crops you can you can consider. Even the other, the usual food crops, depending on on the piece of land that you're using, whether you've dedicated it for horticulture or you then rotate it with with your row crops as well. All right, uh, thanks, uh, Zizai. So I think that was the last question uh, that we uh, had. And um, just check if there are any more questions here. All right, so uh, this marks the end of our webinar. Uh, and just to check from our presenters if there are any parting thoughts before we close. Yeah, we'll start off uh, with Zizai. Any parting thoughts? Okay, uh, thank you so much. Let's continue engaging uh, in these webinars. Uh, the informative, it's important to get feedback from you. Uh, it helps us improve on our services as well as uh, respond or tailor make solutions for you. Uh, I'm sure that will, that, that, that's something that's, that enables us to uh, improve the way we do or conduct our the agriculture in our country. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Zizai. Uh, anything from you, uh, Fungai? Okay, uh, thank you, Rollings. Uh, thank you, farmers, for joining us during this webinar. And we're looking forward to work with you. Feel free to contact us at any time and um, give comments on where we need to approve. And um, if you need to access our products, uh, in the various areas that you are, just feel free and we'll let them, we'll let you know how to, how the products will get to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Fungai. Then, uh, Sydney, any questions? No, um, okay, thank you so much, Rollings, for today's webinar. I really want to encourage farmers to avoid the Mbasambas, a way of um, cropping in yoga. Consult your data always and make sure that you have a market before you get into production. That way you avoid headaches and losing a lot of money on the sale. Uh, thanks, Sydney. I like that one. Uh, thank you all farmers for your participation and interest in this webinar and we hope 
you found it helpful and informative. And we would like to thank our presenters and our partners. Uh, we had Fungai uh, from the Tobacco uh, Research Board, uh, and we uh, also had Zizai from the Zimbabwe Fertilizer Company, and uh, Sydney from Musica uh, Solutions. Uh, and uh, they really shared their knowledge and expertise with us. Uh, thank you so much. And I also would like to thank our partners, the Tobacco Research Board, Okutsaga, Zimbabwe Fertilizer Company, which is the ZFC, uh, and also Musica Solutions for making this webinar possible. Uh, uh, we thank you, uh, farmers, and uh, we hope to see you again in our next webinar. Uh, and uh, on Tuesday at 2 p.m., we are covering harvesting and post harvest management, and we'll be covering key issues uh, on maize, soya bean, and we'll also touch on ground nuts. So please uh, make sure you join in. Until then, farmers, stay safe and happy farming. From us at Agribusiness Media, Movenes Varakanaka, Libenglane, Elite, Everett One. Thank you. <laughs>